Hi. How are you? We will get lights in here and maybe even doors <laughs> at some point. That'll be nice. <laughs> That'll save me a lot of setup time for every video. But hey, Elgato brought us a Christmas gift this year and a pretty big one actually. Something that makes the Elgato Wave mic, probably the most popular USB mic among streamers, makes it way more powerful and even turns the Wave XLR into a super solid, affordable option as an XLR interface. Elgato finally added native VSTs, meaning things like EQ, compression, uh, noise gates, de-essers, and even voice changing mods are now built into the Wavelink app, turning these into robust, well-rounded audio tools. It's just that it's been so long. Elgato, do you remember five months ago when you released this and you promised me that VSTs were like your top priority and they're just now getting here. So look, all I'm saying is they better be good. But hey, real quick, something very exciting to share. You guys know how big of a deal our stream design sponsors are on this channel. So I'd like to announce our newest design partner on the channel Visuals by Impulse, or you might know them as VBI. Visuals by Impulse is the team that's created some of the most iconic stream overlays in the streaming world. I was about to say Twitch, but some of these people are on YouTube. But things like Courage's super crazy star animated intro or Lachlan's camera border that reacts to his Fortnite health. Like these guys do insane things, but now they also do premium stream designs that are affordable to everyone like these holiday overlays. They've got animated ornaments to put around your webcam and overlays. You got festive friend alerts to put on your stream, ice bit alerts for you Twitch streamers, custom holiday emotes, and a ton more. Look, I know you've decorated your home all Christmassy, and let's be real, no one's gonna see that. Why don't you decorate something that people will see, like your stream? <laughs> that was more of a self-reflection on me. Uh, I don't have any friends, so no one sees my home. And these are all super affordable, like 10 to $15. Plus, if you use code Senpai, you get an additional 20% off. Or if you just use the link in the description below, it'll just automatically apply that 20% off. So go check out Visuals by Impulse and pick up your own stream designs or polish your current stream design with some holiday stuff. Go do that today. And by the way, if you find this video about the Wavelink VSTs helpful at all, please hit the like button down below. It helps out a ton. Also, make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. Or if you do end up having any questions at the end of this, I do stream here on YouTube. Link to that down below. Enough links. Let's talk about VSTs. So I went into this like completely blind. I wanted to see what the experience for a new user would be like going into it. So I didn't watch any Elgato material. I didn't watch any how-to videos or tutorials. I saw some messages during my live stream and I saw some tweets saying, hey, Elgato finally added VSTs. Are you gonna show us how they work and how to use them? And I was like, yeah, okay, all right. Fired it up this morning, like three hours ago. Did it totally from scratch. And uh, I have to say the experience was very smooth. Elgato does a great job of making the process easy. First thing you need to do is you need to click the gear in the top right of the Wavelink software and you can see check for updates. Updated to 1.4, which is still in beta. I feel like it's important that you know that, but you'll notice an extra icon at the bottom of each channel. That is your VST icon. If you click that, it will show you what VSTs you have placed on that channel. If you don't have any installed, which you don't yet, it gives you a nice little message that says click here to add more. What is it? I don't even remember what it says. Something like add more. VSTs or find more VSTs, click that. It takes you right to a site that gives you step-by-step -step instructions, but spoiler, you don't need them. This is very easy. Scroll down past the instructions and Elgato did something very helpful. They gave you a giant list of important VSTs that you'll probably want to use. In fact, I'd say they overdid it. Unless you really want to explore voice modulations, I'd say pick up the first one, Reaper plugins, It'll have everything you need. So just click the download link under Reaper plugins and download it from Reaper's website. I'd get the 64 bit. I got that. I didn't have any issues. It'll install right on your computer where you're supposed to go and you're just about ready to use them. Now, once they're installed on your computer, there is one more step. You're going to hit that gear icon in the top right corner. Again, you're going to click the next tab. What is that tab called? Hold on a second. Ah, the tab is audio effects. Click on that tab, then click scan plugins folders. This automatically scanned the exact folder that my VST is installed into. I didn't have to do anything special or find them on my computer. They were just there. It scans them and it brings them into the Wavelink software. And now this time when you've got that little audio effects pop up and you click the plus button, it'll show you the Reaper plugins or whichever ones you install. Go ahead and just choose one that you want like EQ. You can see it adds right into there. You can click the little gear on the 
right of the plugin and you can adjust the plugin itself. You can also turn on and off individual plugins by clicking the speaker on the left side of the name or this is really cool if you wanna have the plugins just in your ears or you wanna have them just in the broadcast and not in your ears, you can turn that on and off at the bottom switch as well. So now you're able to add any kind of voice effects, whether it be the standard ones like EQ and compression that really should be on any voice, but also some cool voice modulators if you wanna do some, some fun, interesting voice changing stuff on your stream. But there's one, Interesting thing that they also added. If you look at the Wavelink software, you'll notice that that audio effect button is not only on the voice channel, it's on any of them. So if you wanna add any kind of effect to any audio source that comes through your Wavelink software, you're actually able to do that. Maybe you wanna add some extra compression to your music track because some songs are louder than other ones and it being kind of quiet backtrack music, you want it to be a more stable level. That's a situation where that might come in handy. That's really cool because that's a feature that hasn't existed on really any other audio interface that has VSTs like the Go XLR or the Avermedia Nexus. But now there is one more step to this, which was kind of the extra mile I wasn't expecting Elgato to go but I'm, I'm very happy that they did. If you open up your Stream Deck software, you'll notice under Wavelink, there are two more extra buttons you can place on your Stream Deck. One is Wave Effect, one is Wave Effect Keychain. Wave Effect means that you can choose any effect inside of any specific channel and you can click it to turn it off and on. So if you have some kind of voice changing effect or whatever, you can do that with that button. The effect chain lets you turn on and off those toggle switches at the bottom that choose where that effect outputs to. So for example, if you've put an effect on your teammates' voices, maybe even something simple like compression just to make it a little bit more level and you wanna hear what your audience is hearing, you can hit that button, send that compression through your ears and then when you're done, turn that off again. All in all, fantastic job. Elgato put this together really great. It's easy to use, easy to set up. Uh, let's jump in and I'm gonna show you setting up EQ on my voice, give you some suggestions on maybe some EQ settings that you should use. And also, I do have a couple suggestions for Elgato. Two things that I wish they would add. Let's jump into that. All right, here we are at Elgato's Wavelink software. It's looking pretty standard right now. Pretty much what you see when you open it up. I'm using the SM7B since it's a pretty common microphone you hear from streamers and it's going right into the Elgato Wave XLR. You can see it right over here going straight into the Wavelink software. So you can see down here the thing I was showing you before. This is the new audio effects button. And what we're going to do is we're going to add from Reaper plugins. We're going to add re EQ, which is Reaper EQ. And what that's going to do, that's going to pull up the Reaper plugin on the top left. So we can see we got four bands right in it. We're just gonna adjust the EQ. Now, we hit our first thing that's gonna confuse some people. It's important to understand why you're not going to hear the changes in EQ. Check this out, if I do this, technically you shouldn't be able to hear anything at this point, but you do. There's a reason for that. It's also worth noting that I don't hear any difference when I do that. You'll see if we go into OBS over here, you can see what I'm capturing here if I go to properties. This is the mic input. I'm not capturing what the mic hears on my stream. That's the Wavelink stream output over here that if I turn on, then you'd start hearing the difference. This mic in is what most people use for like Discord. It goes directly from the mic to the computer and it doesn't have any of the plugins that we're throwing on it. And there's a reason for that. When you want to hear your mic back in your headset, you want to make sure there's no delay or latency. And the only way to do that is by having it go directly from the mic into the Wave XLR and then back straight into your headphones. It doesn't go into the computer, which is where the effects are actually happening. Because the moment you convert your voice to digital to get to the computer, process some effects, send it back, convert it back to analog and hear it, you're gonna get a couple milliseconds of delay and it's gonna feel like an echo. That's what this is right here. This is what your mic sounds like after it goes into the PC and then all the way back sent from the PC, sent from this app back into your headphones. Which is why if you unmute that and then you turn it up, you can hear like an echo going on. <laughs> Am I, am I echoing on the audio? I assume I am. That's what I'm hearing in my headphones. That's that. I, I'm just going <laughs> to, I got to hold on. I got to turn off the, uh, the straight in mic. There we go. Now you only hear one of me, but it is slightly delayed in my ears, but that's okay. It's still going to serve the purpose. The reason we're doing this is because now when I do this, now you can hear that I'm like radioing my voice, right? I'm cutting out all the low end, anything I do on the uh, Reaper EQ is gonna actually happen in real time. 
So this way you can actually hear how you're affecting your voice as you're doing it. Important thing to note, on the Wave XLR, I had to go to the balance setting and turn it all the way to the right so that I'm not hearing my mic directly anymore. Now I'm only hearing what's sent to the PC and back to me so I don't hear myself twice. But let's add some EQ. The first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you like a standard EQ that's probably a good place to start for anyone. First thing we're gonna do is we can add a low cut. It's not super necessary. That's usually just to cut out things like rumble of the desk or some uh, maybe some AC that's happening in your room, those super low end rumbles. But you can see right here in Wavelink software, they can you can already cut it out right there. So we're gonna do it anyway, but just know that you can just do it right here too. The next thing I'm gonna do is I wanna add a little bit more presence to my voice, a little bit of a deeper voice here. Cause I do have a little bit of a low voice and I want that to come out a little bit more. So I like to boost around like 200 to 300 Hertz in that area, just like two to three decibels, nothing crazy. Do you already hear the difference there? Did you hear that? Like if I boost it up, you can totally hear what I'm, what I'm doing to my voice here, right? But we don't, we don't want something that, that dramatic. I like that low boost whenever I use like a broadcast sounding microphone. The next thing I'm gonna do is voices happen to have a lot of mid tones, which sometimes comes across as a little bit muddy, especially if you have like multiple people talking. One of the go-to things I do on every EQ on my voice is I cut out about a thousand hertz. You can see if I turn that up, do you hear like that annoying radio muddiness that's in the voice? I'm gonna turn it down two to three decibels and that kind of cleans up the voice, gets rid of that muddy, that muddy area in there. I wanna do two more things, but you notice we only have one more band here. So I'm gonna add a band that gives us a fifth band and I'm gonna boost it right up around uh, between like 4,000 and 5,000 dB. That's kind of a nice little area where it gives it, it, it's above like that muddy area, but it gives us just a little bit more detail. And then I'm also gonna grab this shelf here, which means it goes all the way to the very end and I'm gonna boost that up a tiny bit again just giving our voice a little bit more detail a little bit more sparkle now let's do this we've got our EQ we, we've boosted more than we've cut so let's compensate by pulling this down about maybe one decibel we should be fine there now the EQ shouldn't be a volume increasement it's just making it sound nicer but let's open up our stream deck software and what I want to do just to hear it like to a B test it is I'm gonna throw a toggle effect on here and we're gonna go Wave XLR, which is this right here. And then we're gonna go to Re-EQ, which is the only one we have on there. So it's the only one that shows up. And then if I open this up, you can see if I hit that button, you can see that it turns it off and on right here. And you can hear it in my voice. Let me turn it off. And this is my voice directly into the system right now. And then if I turn it back on, you can hear it with the EQ. How much of a difference do you hear? It's meant to be subtle. If it's a dramatic difference in voice, you've gone too far. Again, this is without the EQ on there. This is with the EQ on there. Now, the kind of difficult thing is because you can hear your voice in your own head, you can't really hear a huge difference. And sometimes you end up going overboard because like what you're hearing is a mix of your own natural voice in your, in your skull versus what you're hearing in your headphones. So what I wanna do is I wanna get a recording of my voice and I'm gonna play that through here with that effect on my voice. So let's try that out. So the Stream Deck has something called a soundboard or I can throw it in here and I can play any recording in here. So I wanna play my voice in here. This is one of the suggestions I have for Elgato. Let us record our own voice in here. Like, like let it be like the Go XLR, where if I hold this button, I can record something and then if I tap it, it plays it back. Right now, the only way to add your own voice to a playback like this is to have a recording on file on your computer somewhere and you have to find it. So. We do have to record our own voice real quick, but we have Audacity, which is free, and it should just take five seconds. Hey, this is a recording of my own voice. Let's just hear how it sounds if we add and get rid of some EQ. Let's export it, let's do it right on the desktop. We're gonna call it Voik, because it's my Voik. I can just go to the desktop, I can grab that, and I can bring it in, and then if I hit Voik, hey, this is a recording of my own voice. Let's just hear how it sounds if we add and get rid of some EQ. So now I have my voice coming back through a channel on here, and what I can do, is I can add that EQ onto this. Let me see, can I open them both up at the same time? Oh, that's nice. So this is the one on my voice channel. This is the one on that recording channel. I'm gonna just make a match here real quick. Cool, so now these two EQs are just about exactly the same. So whatever I add to my voice, it should add to this one. And then just again, to make this easy, let's put a toggle effect. Let's put it on the SFX track and the EQ. If we look at the SFX track, I can turn it off and I can turn it on. 
Easy peasy. So if I play it without any effects, hey, this is a recording of my own voice. Let's just hear how it sounds if we add and get rid of some EQ. And now let's turn it on. Hey, this is a recording of my own voice. Let's just hear how it sounds if we add and get rid of some EQ. Dude, cutting out that that thousand hertz. Oh. Dude, that makes such a world of a difference. Like, if you want to make your voice sound clean, just cut out two to three decibels of a thousand hertz. Let's turn it off for the first half, and then let's bring it in the second half. Hey, this is a recording of my own voice. Let's just hear how it sounds if we add and get rid of some EQ. Oh my goodness. So because I was able to hear that and not be distracted by my natural voice that I was hearing, I can actually tell exactly what that plugin is going to sound like. And I think it sounds pretty good. I think it's set. I don't think we need to do anything else. Uh, let me put it on the screen here so you guys don't have to rewind. You can be super lazy and you can just take a look at this and you can copy it to your own and then make fine adjustments to what fits your voice. I'll give you like five seconds. All right, that's enough. I'd say the last thing we need to do is uh, remove our voice back from our headphones and then balance our, our voice to broadcast mix back to the middle and, and we're ready to go. I think we're all set. Is there anything else we're missing here? Guys, if there's anything you think I missed, hit me up in the comments down below or jump into my live stream and I'm happy to help you out. If you're still watching because you enjoyed this video, please make sure you hit the like button. Helps us out so much. We really appreciate it. And uh, enjoy the VSTs. I hope this was a great, simple tutorial. Have a good one. Happy streaming.